Let's go down the crazy path for a second. My service and what my purpose is now. Corporal, but uh, she told me she was a medically retired staff sergeant, and I'd seen a picture of her in uniform as staff sergeant. And what we have here, my friends, is Sarah Cavanaugh, a stolen Valor Village idiot. Feet separated, shoulder width apart. The angry cops called it there. If I see her saluting, right? See her kind of sloppy, not at the position of attention, dangling fingers around. I think most jarheads will call that. But hold on a second. She was the head of a VFW post. Kind of a local hero. What you're about to see here is the founder of a charity she tried to take for the big bucks. WM, three tours of combat, hard charger. Let's keep going. Served in the United States Marine Corps from 2007 to 2016. I deployed to Iraq twice and Afghanistan. And so she said I was reduced two ranks from staff sergeant to corporal, but I was still honorably discharged. And I said, you can see his spidey senses going off going, OK, so you're busted as a staff sergeant. Got it. You got pushed down to corporal, but all of a sudden you got honorable discharge. We're going to get into all the details here, but, but hearing the story, you got to think, how did people not know sooner? Hell, if I want to get a pair of glasses online, I got to stick something down, a VA card, some kind of identification to get that discount. This one was trying to take everybody for a ride. Perfect. And then the name of your uh, nonprofit and then your title? Patrol, Base, Abate, and I'm the founder and president. Perfect. And so again, um, if you can just talk to me a little bit about when you first learned about uh, Ms. Sarah Cavanaugh and then the stories that she told you. She attended our, a retreat at our patrol base headquarters in Montana this past July. Uh, I know I received a list of our participants and we had made a video from that retreat. So I'd seen her, uh, but I, that was, uh, that, that was extended at that time. I then attended a subsequent retreat that our organization hosted. Hey, you wouldn't think, let me call this person out. She's ahead of this VFW post and they asked for a DD-214, but you're going to think somebody medically retired out of the military. They got a couple things going. Either they got a military pension, where they've got some substantial disability from the VA, you're going to have something, right? I can see on the surface how you take the bait. I saw a couple weeks after I uh, I was sent to GoFundMe that said Sarah had stage four cancer and she was a Bronze Star recipient with a Purple Heart. I did I had not heard that up to this point. Um, and so I contacted her. I said, hey, I know you're local. I'm local. I'm in Newport. Do you want to come meet me in Newport for a coffee and, and talk about what's going on and, 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 and let's see how my organization can support you. Now here is where the fish tails get pretty strong. As someone who uses the VA, she's got stage four cancer, any type of cancer, some kind of service connected disability, they're gonna treat you. Is it the best care? Well, it's a pain in the ass, but they're gonna treat you. So I'm not sure why she needed the help, but let's keep going. Uh, so we met for about an hour and a half and she told me um, she had stage four cancer that spread to her bones and to her brain and that the doctor had told her she only had a year left to live. And that was over a year ago. So basically she was living on borrowed time. She told me her brother had been killed in Iraq, her twin brother. Uh, she told me that her dad was a general. All right. If I heard that one, I'd say, wow, that's a pretty grand story. Dad's a general. Her twin brother was killed in Iraq. I've heard some wild stories, but that one would kind of make my hair stand up and go, I don't know. That seems kind of odd, but maybe this woman's got a real hell of a story, right? Um, she told me her story about being wounded and saving people in Afghanistan wow. and that she'd been on three combat deployments. So I thought, you know, this is a, an incredible story. It is one hell of a story. So twin brother killed in Afghanistan. Dad's a general. You think to yourself, there's no way this can't be true. Who'd make up this much bullshit? Although she doesn't know when she's going to die, the thing that she wants to do with the rest of her time is find a way to serve the patrol base about their community. And so I said, if, if that's what you want to do with the rest of your life and you could be dying like any day, let me see if I can't find a position within the organization. We're not. And you got to remember, she was working at the VA. So somehow or the other, she had access to enough information to fake it, get the DD-214, but she was kind of sloppy. The DD-214 she got a hold of was from a, I understand it, African-American corporal. But she did say, yeah, I was a staff sergeant, got busted to a corporal. However, I'm not black, but you know, this is part of it, bro. And see if, if we can't raise some funds. But I said, before I do that, uh, why don't you send me your DD-214 and uh, your resume and some red flags were immediately raised with the DD-214. It said that she was a corporal, but uh, she told me she was a medically retired staff sergeant and I'd seen a picture of her in uniform as staff sergeant. Uh, there are a couple other discrepancies that I noted. All right, so you vets out there, if you got bust, let's just 
let's pretend for a second. You're a staff sergeant, got busted to corporal. Would you rock the staff sergeant dress blues? Now, I've met some guys that got busted, mind you, but they're not going to rock the old rank. You got to have a little bit of shame left. You're like, you were the staff sergeant, you got busted, but she she's going down the path. She's going to take it, riding this one all the way home. Fourteen. I called her. Uh, this was last Wednesday now. And I said about a, a week ago, and I said, hey, I'm, I'm about to go ask potentially for you know some money here. And before I do that, I really need to make sure that uh, what, what, what's going on here. And she said, oh, well, I was court-martialed on my way out of the Marine Corps because I'm a commanding officer who's attempting to sexually assault me. That MST, as they call it, military sexual trauma, I know it's got a lot of latitude to the VA because most things, if you're going to get benefits in the VA, it's got to be in your record. They don't budge. I have experience here. They're not giving it away. But when you've got the military sexual trauma, that's a different animal. So I could see how you go, well, I don't want to push this woman too hard. And on ship. And I thought, OK, well, that sounds wild. Uh, and so she said I was reduced two ranks from staff sergeant to corporal. But I was still honorably discharged. And I said, okay. And uh, I said, all right. Well, uh, got it. That ain't happening. So you pull a pew pew on your commanding officer and pull it with your booger finger and you get busted two ranks. I'm just not buying that one. I've heard a lot of big fish stories, man. I mean, the fish stories get heavy. That one's hard to believe. Talk again after uh, I, I need to figure some things out. And so at that point, I looked her up in the awards databases, the Purple Heart database, the Rockstar database. I had some friends of mine look uh, look her up in the different systems to verify her service. And within you know twelve hours, it became pretty apparent that she had not received any of those awards, and ultimately that she did not serve. Period. She just went too hard to the well. She probably could have coasted by. She wanted the money, right? She's dying. She's already dead. She should have been dead a year ago, whatever they said about her lung cancer, right? From exposure, of course. She was just going too hard to the well. She obviously got tangled up in that story just a tad. She was going hard. But the story, the dad's a general, twin brother. You know, I got the pew pew on my commanding officer. I only got busted two ranks. You know, all that honorable discharge. That's a tough one. So I I was talking to another organization who was uh, raising some money for her. um, And I, I know the VFW... She was the, she's the, the commander, the, the post commander. And so in, with my organization, uh, a lot of nonprofits, you have to have be a combat veteran or you have to have uh, be injured. With my organization, if you served, if you're a private entry level, Marine, airman, soldier, sailor, if you served, you, could, you are entitled to our resources and our services. And so I just didn't anticipate a lot of people sending fake DD-214s that they, you know, I think people sometimes lie about. He serves everybody. You served, I don't know, six months, you got hurt. They're willing to help you. That's that's their jam, right? So she has this big fish story. I don't know if she just got really cuckoo in the head. Now, the VFW, all they want to see is DD-214. At least that's how it used to be. So maybe she came in. They're afraid to say anything. But she's wearing a dress uniform. You saw her saluting. Totally unsat. Now, if you're sitting there next to a bronze star recipient, you're going to go, wow, I mean, this woman... She's WM something else. What they did during their service, they went to this school or they were on this, but not, I don't think many people actually make up whole cloth that they served. And so to me, when she says I'm a VFW commander and she is a VFW commander. And when she's been supported by these other organizations, when she says, I want to come out to your, I'm a, I was, you know, we generally trusted her. The story was so big. You'd hate to call someone out on it. So you got this WM. I don't know if you can say that anymore. There's this Marine. She's saying, you know, my brother died. Dad's a general. Had to pull out the bang bang against a bad officer. You're like, wow, who would make this shit up? We're going to have to add additional screening and vetting um, into our application process, which we're looking at a, um, a program called ID Me now to be able to screen. Um, so we'll make sure that doesn't happen. I'm going to make a confession here. I wanted to get the Fox Nation thing. Veterans first responders free. I pull out my card, stick it on the thing, take a picture. Bam. I don't know, five minutes. I got the deal. You would think most organizations would do that. However, her story is so grandiose that you have a hard time challenging it. You think the VFW did some homework. Somebody did. She's on local press. She's talking this big game. You feel bad. She's dying. What are you going to say? Like, I'm not going to challenge her. Again, on, on our end, um, I know that there's an organization called Code of Support, which I think has potentially sponsored her or sent her a significant amount of money. Like, she was their keynote speaker at a DC event recently. So I don't know how Code of Support is handling it, but I know that uh, she's been extensively involved with them. 
Now you see grifters, my wife hates that term. You see grifters all the time, right? People trying to get on. But you usually don't see it to this level. Rachel Dolazar, you know, all these people who want to get on the freebie train. This one gets in my head a tad. If she was hurt in the military and she's got lung cancer, she'd be 100% or she'd be over 50, right? She got a purple heart. And if you're over 50, you're in class one. You guys that are familiar with the VA understand how that works. You're going to get the best treatment the VA can offer. So the medical care could be covered. Now, is it going to be first class medical care? Well, it's good enough if you can get in. So this is a tough one. I know that uh, one of the members of my organization went to visit her brother who was killed in action in Iraq and asked what grave site her brother was at in Arlington because she said he was buried in Arlington. Now, can you imagine her just going, oh, shit, this is going down quick. She's coming up with a number. She's like, let me Google. Hold on a second. Got to go to the bathroom. She's Googling the thing saying, well, he's over here. She's in a real bind here, but she stays strong. Uh, it turns out that the gravesite that her friend from the organization went to, uh, it was a sergeant in the Marine Corps named John Reitzman, uh, who was killed in Afghanistan and who's African-American. Well, that's a tad bit of a snag, isn't it? Now, I guess, hear me out, in today's wackadoodle world, I guess she could have a twin brother that's darker, darker green than she is. Would that make any sense? And she's white. So she's a twin brother. So mm -hmm. uh, that would be, I think, pretty challenging, right? <laughs> um, so, I mean, just the horrible uh, kind of aspects of this uh, really no, no bounds. Um, the, the cancer itself was fake. Um, so you're faking being in the military. Okay, what is she trying to get out of it? Pats on the back like some of the fakers. No, she wants the freebies. And then to top it off, she goes, you know, I got exposed to burn pits. And I got stage four cancer. I should have been dead a year ago. All I want to do is help veterans. The web she had was so deep. I could see if she was a supply clerk and had, you know, a little poetic license. But this one's heavy. She's got to think all the press she's on. Someone's going to go, look at her in that uniform. Something's not right. Now, she could say, well, I got trauma from my time in the military. But you'd still stand at attention. You're not saluting like this. You know, you have your stuff together. But think about the facts for a second here. She worked at the VA. She had access to records. She doctored EOBs, you know, for medical costs. She was getting reimbursed. This one was a pro. I could see her having a future in the FBI. Now, what this should do is require somebody who says, hey, I'm a veteran. I was hurt. I got PTSD, whatever. Just get a VA card. Now, if you don't have one, it's simple to get one. Let's go down the crazy path for a second. You got an other than honorable discharge. So maybe you can't. I don't know if you can get VA benefits or not. Let's say you got hurt, right? Got the lung exposure. You're going to have the cart. You may not use the system, but you're going to have it. So if she didn't tell the big fish tale about having the cancer, she probably could have got away with it a little bit. The general dad, the brother happened to be black, <laughs> died in Iraq. But I got some good old fashioned funny dress up stolen valor guys. Take a look at these videos and thanks for watching. I was reading today that there is no real official uh, document or, or anything about how many folks have received a Purple Heart. Is that correct? Yeah, so I guess that me, uh, no, none of the branches um, officially report that to the state, to the VA or anything like that. I think um, maybe having a role would be a great thing for some people.